Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. I've got a great video for you today. We're going to be talking about the Super Contrast tool in Luminar AI. What is great about this tool is it allows you to add contrast selectively. You can just add it to the highlights, just to the shadows, maybe at different levels on those, uh, something different to the midtones, rather than just a sweeping more contrast to the whole image. And it really allows you to get the most out of your images, and it really is a powerful tool. If you don't already have Luminar AI, there is a link down below where you can check it out and play along with the video with one of your own images. But we got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get to it. Roll the intro. All right, so these are the two images I'm going to work on today, and uh, this one is very flat and uh, low contrast, and so there's going to be a lot to fix on that one. And then I've got this one that is already got a little more contrast and isn't quite as bad a shape as the first one, so it's going to be a little more precise type work. So this kind of give us uh, two different views of uh, using the tool. So let's jump into this one first and take a look. All right, so we are going to bypass the templates, which we certainly could throw a template at this, but we're going to go right to edit, and we're going to come down here to super contrast. That's what we're looking at today. And let's take a minute to kind of look at the window. It's pretty straightforward. It's got it uh, divided into highlights, midtones, and shadows. Pretty self-explanatory. You've got the contrast slider and then this balance slider. And for me, it's a little hard to understand exactly what they are doing. Uh, I guess one of the problems I have when I'm using AI is trying to figure out exactly what all the tools do. I wish there was some sort of a hover over them and it would give you a fly out type thing. But um, what I have typically done is just kind of play with these sliders and see what works. Now, I know you're not going to have anything to do with the balance slider until you add some of this contrast for starters. So the first thing you kind of have to do is go ahead and add some things. You kind of can look at, at what it does. Um, and again, we're just looking at highlights here. So that in this case, it's going to mostly be the sky and the lighter parts of the building. Now, I should mention before we go too far with this, I mean, this was obviously shot on a very overcast day. You can see there's not really much cloud in the sky or it's just kind of overcast giving us a super flat light out here, which is, you know, sometimes nice, uh, but a lot of times you, you lose a lot of depth and things. So this would also probably be a prime candidate for tossing a different sky into the scene, but uh, we'll attack something like that on a different video. So as it stands, we're just going to work with this blank sky we have and just see what we can do. So as, as we move the contrast up, you'll see that things get darker. What I found works best a lot of times is to go about halfway and then start playing with the bottom slider. And you'll see if you slide all the way this way, it's going to really highlight, brighten those highlights. If you go this way, it's going to darken the highlight areas. So you kind of decide how strong you want it to be, and then you decide, do I want to lighten them or darken them? And there's not really a right or wrong answer on these. I think it kind of decides on the look that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to about We'll go up to about 70, just so we have a good, strong change happening. And I'm going to slide it more to lightening the highlights a little bit. I don't want to blow them out, but I just want to give them a little more. One of the things you can do is hit the J key, and it will turn on this little warning system that tells you if you've got areas that are starting to blow out. And you'll see as we start coming across, those things start blowing out. So I'm not so worried about this area back here blowing out. I'm worried about areas in here. So I would bring this over until I started getting some troublesome spots. And I can live with that. Turn the J off. So I think we're good with that. Let's go to midtones, do the same thing. Bring it up to, oh, I don't know, about 60. Go this way to lighten, this way to darken. Now we're looking in these midtone areas. And you can kind of see, in this case, I kind of like moving them a little more to the dark area. And you'll notice as you start adding contrast, the colors jump too. You get a little more color punch as well. So it's also kind of adding color in a way by adding this contrast. And so you've got to watch out for that. You don't want to add a bunch of saturation to it and then start messing with the contrast because you're going to find that those colors go too far. So um, I'm pretty good with that. 
Let's try shadows. And again, let's run this up to, see it's going to lighten things. Let's run it up to 60. Hit the J again, and you'll see as we start darkening, it's going to show us also when the dark areas start blocking up that we want to watch out for. So that little J key is a, kind of a cool little warning sign for you. And again, you've got to decide, do you care if there's detail in the shadow of this doorway? You know, and it may not be a big issue. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try going lighter, and that's obviously not helping things. I think you're going to go this way. I'm going to turn the J back on just so I can see when I'm starting to block up under that tree. And uh, I feel like I'm okay probably going that far. Let's see what it looks like. And I'm going to play with these midtones a little bit more. They're not really a right or wrong answer. Let's take a look right now at the before and after. Let's bring this out. So there's the before and the after. Massive difference. My goodness. Um, I think that looks a hundred times better than that. That looks terrible compared to that. Let's go ahead and tweak just a little bit more and see what we can do. Maybe bring up this um, balance, bring that more so it's giving us a little more brightness. I'm get my uh, J back on just to make sure I'm not going too far. I think that's good. Let's do the same thing with the shadows. I'm going to try and bring this contrast level up to about 70. And then we can play with this a little bit more. And I'm, I'm getting some block up through here, but to me it's kind of a trade-off um, to try and get this stuff through here looking really nice. Even though a lot of that's mid-tone, um, there is some shadow in there. So I'm going to come up just a little bit. I think it's probably about as far as I'm comfortable going because that's starting to block up. And then maybe bump this mid-tone up to 70. Let's go up to 75. Let's go crazy. And uh, just kind of move it around. You can bring it back. And you're just kind of pushing it as far as you can realistically push it. I'm going to stop here. I think 60 is pretty good. And again, let's look at this um, before and after. I think massive upgrade. And um, I think that really looks nice. Now, as you know, you can go in on this template if you really love this look and you want to save this uh, template you can easily do that right here by hitting save and then we go back here to template you're gonna go to my templates and it's gonna be this first one right here we can rename it and we'll call it uh, super contrast super contrast one and then the way that this would be helpful for you is if you had more shots of this exact scene, you had a different angle that you wanted kind of to make the same adjustments to and not starting from scratch, you could bring up another image, go right to that super contrast template, and it would start you out right here. And of course, you could still come back in and go, well, maybe from that other angle, I'm more worried about this black, so I'm going to pull back some of that shadow uh, contrast a little bit. So you can always go back and fine-tune them afterwards, but at least you've got a really good starting point for your image. So that's how I would go with that image. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. Okay, so here's a, uh, another image to work with. This one is not so bad as the last one. It's got some contrast to it, but uh, certainly it can be made better. Now, what we could do just for grins is go ahead and start with that one we just used. We could go to the My Templates, pick Super Contrast, and that's pretty good right there. Um, looking at the before and the after, I think it's a little too much for this image, but um, we can certainly use that as a jumping off point rather than starting from scratch. So let's hit Edit, come down here to Super Contrast, and let's take a look at what we got here. So I would again probably start up here with the highlights and bring it down a little bit. Again, this one is not in such severe need, so I'm going to bring it down to 60. And then we kind of slide around and decide, you know, it's really affecting the clouds and uh, some of these highlight parts of the building. Kind of depends on what you want it to look like. You know, as we deepen things here, you get a little more color, um, but you also get a little more flatness to it. And so I think maybe somewhere up about like that works. Let's go to the midtones, bring that back a little bit, and then we can play with this midtone balance. 
think that's a pretty good level right through there. We can hit our J key, by the way, too, and see how we're doing. Okay, it's showing some shadow problems in here, which makes sense because these shadows didn't need as big of a boost as that last image, and so we've pushed these probably too far. So we can pull things back a little bit. Probably just ease up a little on those shadows. And let's take a look at that in the before and after. So there's our before. Definitely giving us uh, more contrast, and I think that's a much more realistic look than we were getting from that template. There's your before, there's your after. I think the building looks much better, and really the sky has a lot more pop to it. Um, yeah, this whole thing just kind of has a haze to it. The brights aren't really super bright, the blacks aren't super, super black. Um, and as you come through here, you really see it in the building, but you also see it in some of these darker details and even in some of the lighter details. So that super contrast really is a nice way to go in. And like I said, this image needed a lot more adjustment in the shadows uh, versus the last image. And it was nice being able to do that versus going in with just an overall add contrast to the whole image, which sometimes works, but a lot of times there's certain areas that need more or less punch than others. And being able to break it down this way, I think um, really helps. So remember using that J key, Remember to set this contrast level first and then play with the balance and just move these sliders left and right until it looks good to you. There's really not a right or wrong answer and I think there's nothing wrong with playing around with trying them at, even at the extremes because you might just come across something and say, well that actually for this image works really nicely to pull all the contrast out of the shadows or whatever. So that kind of gives you a couple different ways to play around with it and make it your own. So there you go, it's a pretty powerful tool. I think looking at those two images, one of them needed a little bit of contrast adjustment. The other one was super flat and dead and it really took it from a dull lifeless image to having a lot more pop and impact. Also remember that J key really is a great tool for making sure you're not pushing things too far and blowing out highlights or blocking up shadows. If you've got any other tips when you're using Super Contrast, I'd love to hear them. Uh, leave a comment down below. By the way, if you don't already have Luminar AI, you can use the coupon code LARRYPHOTO to get a discount on it when you make the purchase. So hopefully that helps a little bit as well. But that's all we got for this week. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.